Okay, this is Laura Gaddy with Shockey.com, and we're here today with Mike Elizaldi, mm -hmm. who is the founder of Spectral Motion. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we also are here with um, Derek Mears. Mears, close Mears. enough. Mears. Mears. I'm there. I'm on board. Keep, I'm, <laughs> Derek I'm there. Derek Mears, <laughs> who plays Edward the Troll. Um, I had a chance a little bit earlier to be one of the witches from the movie from um, Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunters. Mm -hmm. so Makes sense for there to be witches in that one. Sure. Um, I was really impressed. Tell me a little bit about some of the backgrounds of the people that you have working at Spectral Motion because there's so much involved in making those characters. There really is. It's, it's a very diverse uh, field that we're in. Um, basically, people with, with talents in almost every discipline of artistic and technical pursuit uh, are involved in the process of creating the characters that we build. Uh, here at Spectral Motion, um, we have you know animatronics technicians who have a knowledge of electronics, mechanics, uh, engineering. We have uh, mold makers who who create beautiful molds on the sculptures that are created. We have sculptors. We have uh, seamstresses, fabricators. You name it. I mean, really, basically, almost every discipline of creativity is is involved in in the process. And. With Edward the Troll, I was just really struck with how much just emotion there's in there. It's a very tender character, and you have such details in all of your movies where they really come to life. You have the hair, you have the way it even moves. How do you how do you make your characters be able to have it so convincingly and be able to act well, I, that so was, convincingly in them? That, that, that's Derek comes, you know, he plays a very big part in that, uh, to be able to convince an audience that what they're looking at is, is a living creature. Uh, but I think one of the things that first attracted me to the industry was just how realistic things could be made to look. And that really fascinated me. So, so that's all part of what we pay very close attention to here. But really, I mean, once you get on set, you got to have this guy. You have to have, <laughs> you have to have the performance or else all that work isn't, isn't going to shine. I mean, Thank you. <laughs> and with Edward the Troll, you, you literally had three people controlling different parts of your bodies all at the same time. You had your head, both hands had a different person. What was it like being inside and having to do your performance? I think technically, wasn't, wasn't it five altogether? We it, was, it was five altogether. Yeah, today oh we had five. On set it was. Five. Yeah. Uh -huh. We had no, five it's, people. It's, it's difficult as an actor because as an actor, I bounce through my normal face uh, and also doing monsters. And when you do something like an Edward character, I, you have to trust that. Uh, the common misconception is, oh, you're a big guy, put a bit mask on a big guy, and you're going to be a puppeteer, which is not what I do. Uh, so when you approach a character like that, you have to trust, like, uh, like whatever's going on in the script, I'm, you have to be sincere to whatever's happening, and you have to trust that energy is going to transfer through the makeup and the mask and be captured on camera. And it is, it really is, it's a huge team effort. Like, just little, like, subtext things that you, did, you do normally as an actor, like if someone says something about your past and you think about it for a second, and you have to stop and like kind of convey it, you know, to, to the people working with you. Going, hey, in this scene, this is the motivation of this, and really come together. Like uh, I talk about in film in general, that with the film you're making a giant rainbow, and like I'm just the color blue. Uh, people, oh, you did this, you did that. I go, I'm just the color blue. It's everyone coming together as different colors uh, on the effects team, and, and also the different departments of a film to make that that rainbow the colorful rainbow that it is. And you've done so many great characters in the past, <laughs> and some of them were CG, some of them were practical, mm -hmm. right? What's the difference for you as a performer being able to be in those characters when they're CG as opposed to a practical? Honestly, there is no difference for me because like I said before, the mask on or off, I do the exact same thing. As, as like, long as you commit sincerely that you'll be able to capture. I always pretend there's a giant monitor above my head that whatever it is you're thinking that the, uh, the audience can see and whatever that is. And so if you're not in that moment, if you're not 100% there, they're gonna know. So that this, for myself, I just like my own technique. There's no, there's no difference. And so for both of you guys, monsters are pretty much your life. Um, what were some of the movie monsters you guys were interested in as kids? You first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, video classic. I love Frankenstein. Uh, I was a, a big Frankenstein fan. Um, not b before I got a part of the series. Also, I love the Jason Voorhees character, uh, which technically can make it's kind of a modern Frankenstein. Being sort that, of, know, there's yeah. A, there's that, that innocence and then sure. you know, corrupted innocence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but those are like two of my, my favorites. Is that before I got hired? Yeah, I'm, I'm with Derek on, on Frankenstein. Frankenstein and, and Bride of Frankenstein were mm -hmm. two of my favorite movies as a kid. And uh, that really was the character that, that I think 
so many people in our industry feel the same way about that character because it, it was a misunderstood monster, you yeah. know, uh, and, and it really appealed to us as kids and it, it, it's launched a lot of our careers. I mean, that's why we're all sitting here today is because many of us found that character to be so important to us as, as children that we developed a need to be involved in that in that creative process. And you guys are, you guys create movie magic pretty much every day as your jobs. I heard that you're a big fan of magic, actually. How much of that um, kind of goes into your work when you're doing it? You know, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting, not, not just me, but many of the people in our industry are, are magic fans or amateur magicians uh, and, and did magic shows at, as kids. So, so uh, I think it's a natural transition to get into movie magic because we are still all creating illusions. I mean, and, and that's really, for us, it's a very satisfying moment when you create an illusion that an audience member or members react to, that they feel that they've been taken away from, from a normal everyday existence into something special and, and amazing. So, you know, it is, it is part of our, of our, you know, backgrounds, a lot of us.